My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Kahn on Twitter or at JeffreyCann.com. This podcast is entitled, When Management Doesn't Get Digital Oil & Gas, But the Board Does. I've been invited to meet with a senior board leader from a large oil company, and the topic is digital transformation. The problem? The board gets it, but not management. The board gets it. It's easy to assume that the blocker to digital innovation is the board. And why not? I imagine that board members are chosen for a number of good reasons, such as promoting diversity of discussion, providing unbiased oversight of management, and injecting a level of technical depth to board deliberations. Big oil company boards generally share the same composition. The typical board includes a retired audit partner from a big accounting firm to oversee the money, a senior lawyer to advise on negotiations and legal matters, and very senior operators, formerly vice president of ops, to provide insight into the running of the business. Consumer-oriented retail fuel businesses often have big-time former marketers. Upstream companies have retired pipeline CEOs, and service companies have retired oil company executives. But digital topics are relatively new and predate the growth experiences of many of these same former executives. Aside from cyber worries, which have been on the menu for years, most board members aren't even on social media. Pick an, a public oil company at random and trace the social profiles of the board members. I've tried this experiment repeatedly, and it's clear that folks on the boards pay little attention to the killer platforms of our age, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Board people are pretty much invisible online. Hence, my surprise at this request for a meeting. It appears the board has been reading my book, Bits, Bites, and Barrels, with a mixture of enthusiasm and alarm. Enthusiasm for the possibilities that digital technologies will bring to the oil industry and alarm at the reaction from management. What the board sees. Here's just a few of the curious announcements from the world of digital, mostly in other industries, that I think spark interesting conversation around the board table. Scotland Renewable Power Sift the surreal news from the UK over the appalling Brexit crisis and take note of Scotland's terrific renewable energy story. The wind turbines toiling in the offshore have generated enough electricity to supply 200% of Scotland's residential power needs in the first half of the year. Not every nation will be able to replicate this feat unless they have few houses, lots of coastline and plenty of wind, or perhaps lots of sunshine. Nevertheless, Scottish power is another marker in the remarkable story that is renewables. Constantly growing performance and falling cost, a hallmark of a technology that operates on Moore's Law of Exponential Change. Look up one day and, quote, suddenly, a nation formerly dependent on coal-fired power is exporting its wind. Boards are now very wary of the argument that goes, that can't happen to us here, now, or ever. Tesla's insurance. The insurance industry got served this week with a startling announcement that Tesla will now offer insurance for its vehicles at a significant discount to internal combustion engine vehicle insurance. The economics look compelling. Electric drivetrains have many fewer moving parts, leading to lower repair costs, and autonomous transportation has far fewer accidents. Tesla's vehicle cameras reinforce the analysis that it is the human drivers who are the problem in almost all mishaps. Accidents between Tesla's cars and gasoline cars will soon assign the blame to the gasoline cars and with it, higher insurance premiums. Most of all, Tesla likely gains from the huge data treasure trove that it accumulates as its vehicles shared road, traffic, and driver behaviors, all leading to better analysis of insurance costs and premiums. I expect a race to lower insurance premiums or lower payouts with the arrival of the projected electric cars announced by the auto industry. No electric vehicle benefit analysis I've seen to date incorporates lower insurance costs because the incumbent providers lack the data about electric cars, but now they must to match Tesla. And no automaker provides an insurance quote when you buy a car, but now they must or be viewed as uncompetitive. Facebook announces Libra. You know an idea has merit when its announcement is met by howls of objection from the incumbents. Facebook's cryptocurrency announcement provoked just such reactions from central bankers, politicians, and regulators. 
Of course, the crypto junkies applauded, as you would expect. Facebook's enormous reach suggests that the big initial market is the huge cut of the population who are unbanked, that is, they lack a bank account, and transact in the cash marketplace, but own a smartphone. Even a $50 smartphone from China can run a Facebook app. That actually is several hundred million people. But plenty of small businesses run exclusively on Facebook, and plenty would love to do away with the currency hassles of buying and selling across markets. I can speak directly to this as a merchant doing business around the world selling a book. I surrender an unpleasantly large cut of the value to Amazon, Apple, and Audible for global online sales, and a meaningful percentage to use Square, Stripe, and PayPal, many of whom, by the way, are initial investors in the Libra governance structure. It would be great to find a way around these value siphons. I wrote about the implausibility of Venezuela's oil-backed petrodigital currency some months ago, which has come to naught. However, the idea of circumventing the dollarization of the global economy, and with it, the threat of U.S. sanctions and tariffs, by shifting to a globally accepted cryptocurrency, has surfaced in comments by the chiefs of some national banks, such as in the U.K. Well, if not by Facebook, how about something from Russia or China? Russia is already pushing recent tenders for its petroleum products to be settled in euros. It's only a matter of time, I believe, when a widely and socially accepted cryptocurrency that solves for the volatility problem of Bitcoin is accepted as tender for oil trades. These are just a few examples, but they all trigger some speculation at the board level, particularly about new and disruptive business models. Keep calm and carry on. If some boards in oil and gas are alarmed, it begs the question, what is going on with management? Well, here's the data that management uses to argue that everything is fine and there's no reason to panic. Number one, EV sales don't matter. For all the noise about electric vehicles, they're still nowhere close to the sales registered from internal combustion engines. It will be years before there's enough EVs in the global fleet to detect a difference in fuel demand. Volumes are still in the single-digit percentages of total units. Of course, both BMW and Ford fired their CEOs to speed things up, but the F-150 is still king of the Ford lineup. Light-duty trucks with their bigger engines are hot, hot, hot. Number two, oil sales are growing. If we're experiencing an energy transition, don't tell the oil industry. Oil consumption is up again this year, over last, by 1.5%. Never mind that demand shrank in Europe, Central and South America, the Middle East, and Africa. Only the U.S. and North America, Canada and Mexico were either flat or declining, and the Asia-Pacific region showed any growth at all, and much of that was concentrated in China. Number three, digital is for the consumer. The vast majority of digital innovation appears to be in the consumer worlds of retail, media, tech products, finance, and telecoms, and not in the industrial worlds of logistics, manufacturing, transportation, mining, and utilities. GE's brave attempt to create a digital business around Predix has faltered. Never mind that some national oil companies, such as Adnoc, have strongly endorsed a sector-wide shift to digital, along the lines of Industry 4.0, and appear to be driving hard in this direction. Number four, SCADA still works. That warhorse technology of the 1960s, SCADA, which is Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition, is still large and in charge of most industrial infrastructure. The suppliers of SCADA systems are expanding their offerings with digital tools and bits and bobs, but still retaining full control of the platform. But for the most part, their platforms are closed to outsiders. Number five, the business model is secure. There are no new digital business models that have successfully bankrupted an oil company anywhere. The same can't be said about retailing, banking, insurance, telecoms, and media. There's just something different about the oil industry. Never mind that in 2017, Shell began a pilot to distribute gasoline to the car, a move that obviously undermined the whole idea of convenience retail, and Shell operates 44,000 of such retail sites. Well, now what? Well, as I see it, boards have only a few options when they get it, and management does not. Number one, educate. One of the reasons that management struggles with change is that what's obvious to boards is simply not obvious in the field. This gap can be bridged with education, such as taking management on site visits to related businesses and industries that are dealing with digital change. Raise the stakes. The board can make changes to management's compensation structures to drive greater interest in introducing change. Shell, for example, ties an element of management's bonuses to achieving emissions reduction targets. 
How about mandating that a ramping percentage of business results be directly linked to benefits from digital adoption? Create a spin-off. If the existing business is struggling to address change, boards can direct management to create a spin-off business that is unshackled from the strictures of the legacy business. Many years ago, Shell and Exxon created Era Energy in this way. And finally, change management. If management does not demonstrate a need or a desire to move to a new future, then it may be time to change management, take a page from Ford and BMW, and move on. So in conclusion, running a business is like driving down the highway at top speed with the low beams on. It's in the board's role to get management to light up the high beams. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And please tell a friend about the show. If you have a minute, please leave a review and a rating on iTunes, as that helps others find the show along with other great content. You can follow Jeffrey on Twitter, at Jeffrey Can, or on LinkedIn. Also, look for Jeffrey's new book, entitled Bits, Bites, and Barrels, The Digital Transformation of Oil and Gas on Amazon and other fine online bookshops. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.